Okay, so for this next video lecture, so we will be discussing about the definition and objectives of an assurance engagement. Okay, so we have here the definition of the term. So when we say assurance engagement, so this means an engagement in which a practitioner expresses a conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users other than the responsible party. This is about the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against an appropriate criteria. So basically, in this uh, given definition of the term assurance engagement, there are different elements okay, that we can use to explain further uh, the meaning of this term. So the first element that we can get from this definition is that in an assurance engagement, a practitioner will express a conclusion. So basically, when we say practitioner here, this term refers to an independent CPA who is performing audit or assurance engagement. Or we can also refer practitioner as a group okay, or a CPA firm who also offers assurance engagements to their clients. But normally, uh, assurance engagement are per being performed by an independent CPA. So here, that practitioner will express a conclusion. So in uh, assurance engagement, the term that we usually or that is commonly used is opinion rather than conclusion. Okay, however, uh, based on this uh, definition, they use the term conclusion. But then again, uh, we can also use the word opinion here. Okay, so meaning the practitioner or an independent CPA will express an opinion in an assurance engagement. So where does this opinion uh, will be uh, expressed? So, of course, at the end of this assurance engagement, the practitioner will provide an assurance report which contains that particular opinion. Okay, so as we go along with our discussion and to the next uh, modules and chapters, you will learn about the different types of conclusion that a practitioner can express in an assurance engagement. Okay, so that is the first element. Okay, the second element from this definition is um, enhancing or assurance engagement enhances the degree of confidence of the intended users. So here, uh, when we say assurance, this term assurance, okay, this uh, is also related to this uh phrase degree of confidence or enhancing the degree of, of confidence this is actually what assurance means okay meaning assurance engagement is being performed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users so why is that so okay so if you could still remember in our uh, first uh, video lecture we mentioned there uh, the parties that is uh, covered or under the framework for assurance engagement so we mentioned about the intended users so again when we say intended users in assurance engagement we normally mean here the stockholders okay so here what or why what is the reason uh, what is the reason that we should enhance or what is the matter or subject okay for enhancing or why do we want to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users so here um if you are the stockholder of a certain corporation okay you are the owner so being an owner of the 
company, you are concerned and you are basically uh, after the performance of the business in terms of uh, financial performance and position. So normally, as a stockholder, we are given a report such as the financial statements okay, regularly uh, so that we will be able to uh, know how the organization or the business uh, operates in a certain period of time. How uh, they are able to generate profit and other things that is related to the financial information that we can get from the financial statements. So here as a stockholder, so the question is, do you uh, totally rely on, or I mean, would you totally rely on the financial statements that is being prepared by the management or the organization? Because as mentioned, the responsible party is the one who prepares the financial statements. Okay, so you all know that it is under the accounting department. So they are still part of the organization. So they are the one who is preparing the financial statements that are being presented and uh, given to the shareholders. So the question there is, as a stockholder of that corporation, are you 100% uh, confident about the reliability of that financial statements that is being presented or uh, given to you from uh, the organization which is uh, prepared by the management. Okay, so there is some uh, amount or degree of doubt that you may uh, have because uh, you all know that there are objectives of the organization and the objectives of the owners or stockholders and sometimes these objectives are opposite or they uh, do not uh, conform because in the first place if you are in the organization your objective is to have uh, more or to increase your uh, investment from the investors or to remain as a going concern entity in the long run so how would you do that okay this is uh, or this status can be seen from the financial statements so in order to do so you should have that kind of uh, financial statements that will be presented but the question is are this FS really reflects the real status of the organization? Okay, so that's where the doubt comes in. Okay, because on the part of the stockholders, what they are after or objectives are to increase their uh, investment or their wealth. Okay, so how to increase that through uh, the performance or the best performance or result of the performance of that company or organization. So again, we can look that uh, uh, details from the financial statements. Or we can see that from the financial statements. Okay, so because of this, um, there are some doubts, okay, in the intended users, okay, users of the financial statements. Okay, so here, if these financial statements uh, have undergone audit or there has been an assurance engagement where the practitioner expressed a, an opinion, okay, so here, uh, the intended user's confidence will be enhanced, meaning uh, somehow they will believe okay, whatever the financial statements are showing them because it is audited already. Please take note 
that this practitioner is an outside party. They are not part of the organization. They are an independent practitioner. They are not employees of the organization. So therefore, they have the independence and they are uh, apart from the organization in which they can express a reliable opinion whether the financial statements are fairly presented or not. Okay, so that's why, as a result, the intended user's confidence of using the financial statements will be enhanced. Okay, so the next element is um, here, in an assurance engagement, there is an outcome of evaluation. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, the practitioner express a conclusion. So before they can express a conclusion or opinion, they have to evaluate the financial statements. So in this case, financial statements is what we mean by the subject matter. Okay, so the, the auditor or the practitioner will evaluate or measure the subject matter or the financial statements in our example, whether it is reliable or not. So in the evaluation of this subject matter or in our example, the financial statements, we use a certain criteria. So here, if you could still remember in your financial accounting, in preparing the financial statements, we are following the PFRS, Philippine, uh, Philippine Financial uh, Account, uh, Philippine uh, Financial Reporting Standards, PFRS. Okay, so that's uh, where we can find the guidelines, how to measure. I mean, the definition of the account, how to measure the account uh, initially and subsequently, how it is valued in the financial statements, or is it subject to amortization, uh, depreciation, depletion, and so on. Okay, this is our benchmark in preparing the accounts and the financial statements. This is what we mean by criteria here. So, in this case, the auditor or the practitioner okay, will be using the PFRS or the standards that is applicable in evaluating the subject matter. So, in our example, in to state uh, differently, here the practitioner will use the PFRS to evaluate the reliability of the financial statement. Okay? And as a result of their evaluation, okay, this outcome, this will be now the basis of the expression of conclusion. So based on the evaluation, the, the practitioner will know if the entity did actually follow PFRS in preparing their financial statements. And if not, then they will express such conclusion as well or otherwise. Okay? So that is about the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against a certain criteria. So therefore, again, if we will look back on the definition of uh, assurance engagement, so we will repeat. Okay, so assurance engagement means the practitioner will express an opinion or conclusion in which this conclusion will have the effect of enhancing the degree of confidence of the intended users okay, in using the financial statements that are prepared by the responsible party or the management. So here, what the practitioner will do is that they will evaluate or measure the subject matter. So subject matter can be a financial data or even non-financial data or even physical uh, equipment. 
Okay? So, they will measure ev or evaluate the subject matter against an appropriate criteria or standards in order for them to express this conclusion, again, to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users of the financial statements. Okay, that is what we mean by assurance engagement. Okay, so the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter, okay, that results from applying. So, this is related to the last element that we discussed earlier, where uh, we talk about the evaluation or measurement of the subject matter against an appropriate criteria. So, the example here, so the recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure represented in the financial statements uh, result from applying this is the result of applying a financial reporting framework or standards okay so for example pfrs that is the criteria and uh, the financial position financial performance or even cash flows these are our subject matter so we have discussed this already in the element earlier Okay, so next is assertion. What do we mean by assertion? When we say assertion, this is a statement or representation that is being uh, presented with confidence. So that is what we mean by assertion. So in this case, uh, assertion relates to the financial statements, okay, where the management who is the uh, party responsible for uh, preparing these financial statements, uh, they uh, prepared this FS and this will be used for evaluation. This is their assertion. Okay, Whatever con that, uh, that is included in the financial statements, that is the management's assertion, their statement okay, or representation. So, an assertion about the effectiveness of internal control. So, aside from financial statements, internal control can also be uh, used as a subject matter. Okay? So, the assertion about the effectiveness of uh, an internal control that is re that results from applying a certain framework also uh, for internal control, that is the criteria, and a process okay so the process of uh, the internal control will be our subject matter or the internal control itself is that subject matter okay so the same uh, principle as well as what we have mentioned earlier okay so in this case uh, in some assurance engagements the evaluation or measurement of the subject matter uh, is performed by the responsible party. Um, normally, we can refer to this as uh, the internal auditing. However, the degree of confidence under this kind of engagement is lower compared to that of an assurance engagement that is performed by an independent practitioner. Okay, so here... Uh, the subject matter information is in the form of assertion also by the responsible party that is made available to the intended users. So, if this is the case where the assurance engagement is being performed or the evaluation or measurement of the subject matter is performed also by the responsible party, we call this as assertion-based engagement. Because in this case, uh, assertion, because here the 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 responsible party or the management is confident in whatever they have presented or included in the financial statements. That's why it's called as assertion-based engagement. Okay. So, another, uh, in assur other assurance engagements, the practitioner either directly performs the evaluation or measurement of the subject matter or they can obtain a representation from the responsible party that has performed the evaluation or measurement. 
that is not available to the intended user. So in this case, uh, this assurance engagement is done by the practitioner who is an outside uh, or independent uh, party apart from that of the organization. However, the, the, the evaluation or measurement is also obtained from the responsible party. Okay, but there, the, the, the degree of uh, confidence here is much higher compared to the first one. However, this is not that high compared to the engagement or assurance engagement that is totally performed by an outside uh, independent practitioner. Okay, so next, the subject matter information is provided to the intended users in the assurance report okay so here uh, if we will uh, be discussing about the auditor's report already so you will know that uh, this other uh, responsibility of the auditor and the management is included as a statement an important part of the uh, auditor's report so this is um, also to uh, for the purpose of uh, informing the intended users about their responsibilities. So this engagement is called direct reporting engagement. Okay, so if the subject matter information is provided in the assurance report, this is what we call direct reporting engagement. Because here, uh, normally what uh, the the practitioner do is they uh, report they prepare the report and submit it to the management and the management will use or attach that auditor's report in the financial statements that is to be given to their stockholders or the intended users okay so under the this framework still okay so there are two types of assurance engagement that the practitioner can perform or provide so we have what we call reasonable assurance engagement and limited assurance engagement so as we go along we will differentiate or um, define these two types of assurance engagements see okay so we have here uh, some sort of a description or definition of the first type of assurance engagement so here the objective okay for a reasonable assurance engagement this is done to reduce or this is a reduction in assurance engagement risk to an acceptably low level okay so here um normally in an assurance engagement we have risks okay so there are risk of the practitioner not detecting any misstatement or the risk of detecting a misstatement but actually not a misstatement because in this case uh, assurance engagement will not give a hundred percent assurance to the intended users that's why it is termed as reasonable when we say reasonable, this is high degree of assurance but not absolute. Or, for example, 80% or 90% uh, assurance but not 100%. Okay, that's why it is called as reasonable, acceptable. Okay, so here, when a practitioner performs a reasonable assurance engagement, Okay, this will reduce the risk to an acceptably low level. So, meaning to say, the risk here will be minimized because assurance engagement was performed. Okay, when uh, the assurance engagement is not performed, then the risk is too high and will not be acceptable. Okay, so that is the reason why we perform assurance engagement but again under the reasonable assurance engagement the risk is reduced at an acceptably low level 
Okay, so this will be the basis for a positive form of expression of the practitioner's conclusion or opinion. Positive form of expression because in this case, um, what they will state is um, the in the report is that the financial statements is in accordance with PFRS. That is an example of a positive form of expressing an opinion or conclusion under the reasonable assurance engagement. So what about for a limited assurance engagement? So here, um, if a limited assurance engagement is performed, so the risk or assurance engagement risk will be reduced to a level that is acceptable. Okay, please take note of the difference. Under the reasonable assurance, the risk will be reduced to an acceptably low level. Whereas, under the limited uh, assurance, the risk will be reduced at a level that is acceptable. So, what is now the difference? Okay, so in this case, uh, if we will look okay, into these two types of assurance engagement, Okay, so we can say that a limited assurance will provide us with an acceptable audit risk or assurance engagement risk. So meaning to say, for example, if the acceptable risk is 20% and we do the limited assurance. So that is the only uh, percent okay, of risk that uh, this assurance can uh, provide or re reduce the risk I mean, to that level, which is 20%. However, if we will perform the reasonable assurance engagement, okay, we can reduce the assurance engagement risk to an acceptably low level, meaning to say we can reduce the risk below 20%. So we can have at least 15% okay, risk or assurance engagement risk. So meaning to say, between these two types of uh, engagements or assurance engagements, reasonable assurance is uh, much better compared to a limited assurance engagement. Okay, so here, um, the risk is greater than for a reasonable assurance as the basis for a negative. Okay, but here, um, uh, in the reasonable assurance, we will have a positive form of opinion or conclusion. In a limited assurance, we can uh, we will have the negative form of uh, conclusion or opinion. Because uh, as an example, under the limited assurance engagement, the statement or the opinion of an auditor will be that uh, there is no, uh, there is nothing that come to their attention that would be uh, that they would believe that the financial statements is not fairly presented that's why it's called negative form because they stated as there is nothing that comes to their attention that they will believe that the financial statements are not in accordance with pfrs but what they mean is that they also or if we will restate it otherwise in a positive form the same as uh, it will be the same as that of the reasonable assurance where this financial statement is also uh, in accordance with PFRS. But in this case, it's in the negative form. Okay, so that is under the limited assurance. Okay, so that will be for the second part of this module, definition and objectives of assurance engagement.